Hi, welcome back everyone and today we are talking about the right order of preparation for FRM part 1 candidates. Now many students are actually confused as to which book they should start or basically how to start their overall FRM preparation, right? So in this video, we're going to be talking about that and very logically, I'm going to explain you like why this thing makes sense, why this particular book makes sense to do it at first. Okay. All right, and before we go ahead, uh, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, so this is a success testimonial from one of our students who's cleared his FRM part one in November 2022. The name of the candidate is Kenton from Malawi. You can pause this video and you can read the success testimonial. And these are pricing and plans that is available on our website that is www.wordies.com where we are, we've got a batch for English Hindi also Hindi plus English if you're looking out for May or August we've got a batch for FRM part 1 May and August as well and there's also a free sample course on our website go ahead you can enroll for this free sample course on our website okay now here you can see that for FRM part 1 we've got these four books book 1 book 2 book 3 and book 4 and the weightages for each of the book I've mentioned out here now there are 11 chapters in book one similarly 15 here 20 in book three and 16 in book four now the natural question is which book should you take first i mean you can take it you know book wise like book one book two book three book four but what i feel is the very natural progression that you should follow is that you should start with book number two this is a very natural sequence you start with book two then you move to book three then four and then finally you take up book one or you can even make a jumble up approach for example you can take book number two and then once you're done with this you can take both these two chapters chapter five and chapter six wherein you will see a lot of things about the statistics that you've just learned right so this way once you're done with this, you can even take this, this, and then move on to book number three. And it actually makes sense. Why? Because a lot of things that you learn here in quants, they are applied over here in these two chapters. You talk about regression over here. Yes, you will see over here. You talk about the distributions that you see. Yes, you will see in these two chapters. So everything that you've learned in quants about correlation, covariance, you will see in this particular chapter. So that is one sequence that you can actually follow for your FRM part one. But why should you start with book number two? In quantitative analysis, you will learn all the things that is actually needed. Now, I've already given you an example about why you should take this and you can whatever that you learn here, you can directly apply in uh, book number one for that fifth and sixth chapter. But apart from that, Many things that you see in FMP, many things that you see in uh, in the VRM, you will you you see a lot of instances where quants or the statistical knowledge is required. So naturally, it makes sense that you start with this book, acquire the skills that is needed to understand those topics, and then you will be able to better appreciate the content that is there in book number two and book number three. So that's the reason I recommend this particular approach. As an example, in FMP, okay, and also in VRM, the very first chapter that begins with value at risk, right? A lot of things, the underlying essence of value at risk lies in the heart of the distribution. So if you do not understand this particular distributions out here, you'll not be able to fully appreciate the concepts behind the value at risk another example that i can give you is the binomial trees okay which is also there in vrm and most of the things in binomial trees has been taken from quants you will see about log normal distribution in the bsm chapter in vrm so there can be multiple examples like such talking about the fmp okay when we talk about the probabilities like for example in break even premium in the insurance chapter you need to understand the conditional probability. If you do not understand the conditional probability, you'll not be able to go ahead and do that. Many of the things in hypothesis, regression, so on and so forth, the population, the sample data, all these things are actually applied in finance. Also, the measuring returns, the Monte Carlo simulation, which is also a method 
in the value at risk everything that you see here is going to be applied somewhere else and that's the reason we have these things in in, in finance right so go very in a structured way start with quants and then move on to other books all right now there are some people who feels that maybe quants is tough uh, maybe we can start with book number three which which seems to be easier to do some but let me tell you you can do that there's no harm in it but it's just that you need to have a basics of quants and then you can move on to these things and then you you do whenever you feel right for the quants that's the choice is absolutely yours but the natural progression is this you you start with book two and then you move on to the financial things right but if you are not comfortable with quants you want to do like okay i want to start with the easiest th see any which ways you do it now you do it later you will have to complete it then when you move on to book number three and book number four either you can take it one by one that is entire book three by one or maybe you can just take entire book four at once or the alternative that you can do is you can just take it simultaneously as an example here what i've done here is that i've i've divided this entire book wise into these uh things that you see here in, into major chunks the first one is the derivatives as you can see four five six chapters they talk about the introduction to derivatives how the derivative markets work so on and so forth then we've got the first type of derivative which is forwards and the futures and then we've got the options and then fixed income products and then some other things out here and this is the fourth derivative which is the swaps and book number three basically it tells you or it introduces to the financial markets and the different products that we have over here right and then book number four is a natural sequence why because whatever that you learned out here is it talks about the valuation of these things right how do you value such a derivative contract so we start off with the var these three chapters talk about the value at risk and then we've got these things out here uh, then we've got the advanced fixed uh, fixed income topics and then advanced options topic so one thing that you can do is if you let's say you've completed the options here you can take up this particular thing let's say you've completed the basics of fixed income no problems you can move on to the advanced fixed income topics that's also one way that you can do it another way is that once you've completed the entire fmp so you're confident that okay now 30 percent is almost done right then you can maybe just move to these advanced options and then take fixed income and then take the other things which is left out and that is also one way that you can do it but i hope having a a visual you know uh, appearance like this it gives you a kind of logical thought process as to where to start where to begin that's that's what the entire purpose of this video is to help you understand where naturally the progression is and then finally what we are left out is book number one so if you've already done these two chapters right after quants fantastic you've almost completed uh major things or mo most probably i would say the calculative things that is there in foundations of risk management then what's left out is the other chapters you follow any sequence you like and maybe uh, just to give you some hint this particular chapter chapter number four chapter number nine chapter number ten they are actually related so maybe in just when you start with fourth move on to chapter number nine move on to chapter number ten you will have a proper sequence that that is going to be needed right so that's one thing that you can do and all the other chapters are essentially they are on a standalone basis which is absolutely important in this particular frm course all right so finally to sum it up you can start with this 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 and finally book number one or if you want to start with the book number three you can combine it you can take it a standalone basis whatever that you like this is something that you can do so i hope that this video has been uh, it has been helpful to you so with that being said guys thank you so much for your time and have a good day